name of Jesus telling him how excellent your name is. Thank you Lord for your name is excellent. How wonderful, how mighty your name is. We bless you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. You are awesome God. Hallelujah. You are so excellent oh God. We bless your name. How wonderful, how mighty, how excellent is your name. Jesus is the friend to sinners. I'll talk to your neighbor, tell them Jesus is your friend. Turn to the other one, tell them, I know you're not very good, but Jesus is your friend. Uh, look for somebody else and tell them, how come he is your friend? <laughs> yeah, because he ought to be friends to the holy people. Uh, but uh, Jesus is the friend to the sinners. I love Luke chapter 15 and I think this is, if I was asked to choose my favorite uh, part of the scripture, I would choose Luke chapter 15. The Bible starts by saying, now the tax collectors and the notorious, especially the wicked sinners, were all coming near to Jesus to listen to him. The notorious, everywhere we are, they are the notorious people. I remember when Gilbert got saved, everybody said, eh. Even this one, yes. Maybe because of the way you know one another. But in every setting, there is a notorious one. The notorious one. There is that person whom everybody says, Hey, Hatakama. You know, because of the way they carry themselves, because of the things that they have done. And in the Bible, we have such people. Paul was one of them, a persecutor of the church, yet became an apostle, converted. The garrison demoniac, full of demons, legions of demons. Yet Jesus transformed his life and he became his follower. Now here is a group of other people who are notorious sinners. The tax collectors. The tax collectors are not your usual people. These were notorious people because they are power brokers. They enter into agreement with the Roman soldiers to go back to their people and ask money from them so that they can take that money to the Roman soldiers. It's like your brother turning against you. It's like your best friend becoming a traitor, becoming a betrayer. It's like your husband or your wife becoming number one in persecuting you. These were the tax collectors. These were hated people. And every time, there was a group that were called the Zealots who always carried a dagger with them so that if they met the tax collector on the way, they would come as close as they could to them and stab them and kill them. They were like the suicide bombers. Because these people were a problem to the community. How can you just turn against us? We were eating together. We were friends, but now you are in agreement with the enemy. You are the one asking money from me. That is how bad the tax collectors were. Yet when Jesus came, even knowing that nobody would eat with the tax collectors, Jesus chose to eat with the tax collectors. Actually, they loved him. For the first time in their lives, they found somebody who was not condemning them. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, I love people who do not condemn me. 
come to the other one and tell them, uh, they would rather help me out of my problem than condemn me. Not tax collectors. Jesus loved some people because they found for the first time somebody, um, I mean, he was out to make a relationship with the sinner. Now, but the, the other group, the Pharisees and the scribes in verse 2, kept muttering. You know, muttering is saying words that are not understood, but it's a complaint they're making. Oh, oh, look at the Holy One. Look at the one who calls him the Son of God. Himself the Son of God. He's eating with the sinners. The Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering and indignantly complaining, saying, this man accepts and receives and welcomes sinners and eats with them. There are three actions that Jesus did with the tax collector and sinners. One is that uh, he accepted them. To know that you are accepted will transform you. Jesus knew that. That people are not after being condemned, but after, uh, after being accepted. You are accepted that yes, you have this weakness. You have this weakness, but we accept you anyway. Jesus also did something else. He received them. The Bible says, he who comes to me, I shall in no wise cast away. And this was true with Jesus. That anybody who went to him, he accepted them the way they were. The, that, the other thing that he did with them was eating with them. Eating in the eastern countries is not something that uh, is easy or taken for granted. It is such a moment of covenant. Eating together means that I'm entering into a covenant with you. And just know that. If you want to make friends with people, invite them for lunch, eat with them. It's a covenant you're making with them. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor I've known something new. Tell the other one, I'm going to fix a lunch for you. No? You see, eating is such a serious matter. Eating together. Now here at workplace, you may not eat together because everybody you pick your lunch, rush somewhere, uh, quickly take your lunch and go back to work. But there are moments you invite people to eat with you. The moment you eat with people, you've entered into a covenant with them. Jesus was eating with sinners. He knew that there's no way Darkness will overcome the light. It is light that overcomes the darkness. The moment light is switched on, darkness flees. Praise the Lord. And I want us to have that in mind because we, we need to be like Jesus. And he chose to teach them in a different way, to tell them stories. Do you like people who tell you stories? Or the ones who tell you um, uh, ten ways to this, five ways to this, and you look at the list, you disqualify yourself. But Jesus is very different. This is how he's different from us. He used parables. Parables are stories. He knew that there were scriptures that were written. He could have quoted Moses. He could have quoted the Ten Commandments, but he chose to use parables. Parables, stories with a lesson. And I'll just read verse 4 and then I will be praying for you. He says, What man of you, if he had a hundred sheep and should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness or in the desert and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he gets home, he summons or calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my sheep which was lost. Thus I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven when of a one, especially the wicked person who repents, changes his mind, abhorring his errors and misdeeds, and determines to enter upon a better cause of life than of a 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. This is Jesus talking about the Lord Sheep. That he would rather leave the 99 and look for the one that is lost. 
The mind of God is on the lost sheep. That one which is in the forest. Remember, what is taking place in the mind of the shepherd is, what if the hyenas have killed my sheep? He's worried. What if the sheep has been caught in the thicket by thorns? This is the mind of the shepherd. And this is what he's doing even right now. He's concerned about the least of us in this place. You may be one person and you know yourself that people do not really value. They don't even greet you. You want them to greet you, but they don't greet you. You wear smartly, nobody can comment that you are wearing a smart thing. Have, they have a low opinion over you. Maybe it's because of the way you laugh or the way you walk or where you come from or how you are or because you don't speak very good English or maybe because you are short or taller than everybody else or maybe you are fatter than everybody else maybe you are thinner than everybody else there is always a discriminatory part of you that people can use to look down on you but God's mind is on you who is pushed back you who feels like the lost sheep and his mind is I will leave this 99 and go for that one which is lost because I'm concerned about even that single one that is lost and that is you this morning God is thinking about you that everybody else has received Christ other than you he's concerned about you everybody else is doing well but you're suffering silently everybody else is healthy but you have a disease that you've never told anyone about everybody else has this but you don't have it the mind of god is on you this morning so as we pray just see yourself standing before god alone he's looking at you individually and not with the eyes of condemnation his mind is once i get this lordship I'm going to put this lost sheep on my shoulders and I'm going to carry it home. And when I arrive home, I'm going to call a party and people will rejoice with me. He has good plans for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Let us pray. We humble ourselves before you, O oh God, knowing you love us. You care for us, O oh God. We bow before you, O oh God, to worship you for this love that you've loved us with that you would think of us even with all our shortcomings your mind is on us lord i thank you that you're thinking about me i want to take a minute and just thank god that he cares for you that of all people he can think about you just thank you telling god i'm so amazed that you still care for me. His love supersedes your sins. His love reaches out to you. And I, I am speaking to you because I know that you've heard other voices telling you that you're condemned. But I can tell you in the name of Jesus that God is in need of you. He would rather leave the 99 and come for you. He cares for you. He loves you. In the name of Jesus. Are you here and you're saying, I am the one, pastor, you're talking about? I want you to raise up your hand. I want to just, I'm going to see it in the name of Jesus. That as we enter the new season, the new government, you're going to be born again. Do we have somebody who is like that this morning? Or maybe you're there and you're saying, pray with me. I know everybody else has this. I don't have it. But I know the mind of God is on me. Raise up your hand as we pray together this final prayer in the name of Jesus. Raise up your hand. We believe God together in the name of Jesus. God honors obedience and the step of faith that we take in the name of Jesus. As we pray, I want you to believe God that your life is getting transformed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, and thank you for this dear ones, O oh God. Thank you for them, O oh God, that are raising their hands, O oh God, saying, God, it's me you're talking about and thank you for coming this way to look for me i accept your love i accept to be carried on your shoulders thank you for caring for me 
Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. We appreciate the Lord. We appreciate the Lord. He is so good. He is so thankful. Amen. Uh, I want us to give our offerings, prepare your offering. I want to pray with you. And we, we do it by faith. We, do it, we don't do it because we have, but we do it by faith. Knowing that our provision is from God. It's him who enables us to work. It's him who enables us, that enables us to um, have good lives. And so we give by faith in the name of Jesus. So prepare your offering and uh, we give it to him. All our hearts in the name of Jesus. And we thank God. God has helped us. We are within time and uh, God is good. Amen. Amen. And we can be singing as we receive uh, the offering in the name of Jesus. We can be singing.